Janelle Riley, and I'm your host for today's Half Hour with a Small Light. Please join me in welcoming today's guest. She stars in the series, actor Belle Powley. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me. Uh, congratulations on a beautiful show. Um, before we get started, can you give us a quick overview of the show in your own words? So A Small Light um, is centered around a woman called Meet Gies, um, who was Otto Frank's secretary. So it's set in the 40s during the Second World War in the Netherlands where they lived and Meep was the person responsible for helping the Franks hide in the secret annex um, so in our show we cover the whole time that they were in the secret annex in which she was responsible for getting them food keeping them safe her and her husband Jan actually ended up working with the Dutch resistance and saving many other Jewish people in Amsterdam and she was also the person responsible for after the war finding Anne's diary and preserving it and giving it to Otto and it was later published um, uh, she's a pretty incredible young woman it's fantastic uh why don't we take a look at the trailer all right listen to me you can't go back you can't run and you can't show any fear let's do this I hear they're cracking down on the Jews. That must be scary. We have to hide our allegiances or else we're not going to make it. Me, what I'm asking you to do is dangerous. If you get caught, you could get arrested or even worse. I need your help hiding my family. You need to take your time to think it through. No, I don't. What do I do? Can I help you? Tell me where I can find Otto Frank. So he going to tell me? He's my boss and my friend. What would you have me do when Mr. Frank asked? Ask, Say no! Ask me! I didn't think I had to consult you before deciding to save a person's life. Turn darkness into life. People have lost everything and still they resist. And I have to resist too. We're going to start a fire. I need to remember that things were good so I can believe that they'll be good when this is over. We have to choose when we fight them. We don't let them choose for us. My only job is to protect my family. Did you hear that? The Queen wants my diary. And I can't wait to see it. Dude. Get down, get down! Have your heads. We can't save everyone. But if I don't try, I don't think I'll be able to live with myself. Such a fantastic series, yeah. and I'm so ashamed to admit I wasn't familiar with the name of Meep Geese, who, who, you know, she was a woman who was so ahead of your time. How did you become aware of her story and what interested you in this project? Don't, don't be ashamed because I didn't know anything about her either. I think that's partly you know, our industry has changed in the last few years because of Me Too. And I think there probably are a lot of unlikely female heroes kind of popping out of the woodwork now because, you know, 15 years ago, people wouldn't have wanted to make a show about people like me. So it's not it's not our fault that we didn't know about her is what I'm saying. Um, yeah. So when I was I was offered this role and, and, and I I'm Jewish. So, you know, my first reaction was of course, this is probably something I'm going to want to be a part of, you know, this is a part of history that is very important to, you know, myself and my family. Um, but beyond that, like, I do think it's a part of history that's been explored a lot in TV and television, in TV and film. And I often in my career actually have shied away from period dramas, just because I sometimes find myself feeling a little distanced when I'm in them or even when I'm watching them. I don't know if it's something to do with feeling trussed up in the costumes or the kind of olden day language as I call it. But when I read the pilot for this, I was just so blown away by how there I felt and how contemporary it felt for something that is a, technically a, a period piece. And that's partly because this woman that it centered around Meep was, as you said, a very modern woman for her time. But it's also tonally our showrunners, the creators, Tony Phelan and Joan Rater, were going for this kind of tonally modern edge. And I thought there's something really interesting about that, because as I said, it's a part of history that's been explored a lot. You know, people know the overarching facts. 
Um, and yes, I'm Jewish, so I think it's incredibly important to keep talking about the Holocaust as there are less and less Holocaust survivors alive today. But I think that it has to be done in a way that's going to make people connect. And I think and I thought, what better way in than through the eyes of this incredibly relatable, modern young woman? Because I think as much as it's important to retell the stories, I think it's important to um, relate them to today and think about the parallels today. And I think that's exactly yeah, I can see that's what they were trying to do here. And I thought there's something just so intriguing about that. I mean, I'd always kind of wondered about the people who helped the Franks, but, you know, to, to find out that it was really primarily this young woman was was really overwhelming to me. Yeah. And as so many, in my opinion, uh, war dramas um, are told through the eyes of men, um, you know, often about men in the trenches, men at war, you know, so I I just thought, yeah, I, I think it hasn't been done before. You know, people don't know about Meep and you know, she was on her version of the front line, you know, she really was putting her life at risk as she put her neck on the line for years to because it was the right thing to do. Mm -hmm. And it's so interesting, you know, the way that we've presented it in our show and the way that it should be thought about is like when in times of crises, like during the Second World War, and you know, as I said, there are many parallels with the world today, but there really are just two options, like you're either doing something, actively doing something about it and helping people, which is what she was doing, or you're a passive bystander. And I think, you know, the exploration of that is really, um, yeah, it's just interesting. And you've played real people before. Um, I'm curious how that sort of affects your preparation because um, on one hand, it's great to have material to draw from, but also that probably makes it more intimidating. Where did you even begin? Yeah, you you totally hit the nail on the head there. It's definitely, um, you know, this whole job for me was very intimidating. I, I'd never led a, a TV series before, so there was kind of that element of it. But on top of that, you know, it's about a part of history that means a lot to a lot of people. And it's about a real person who, you know, we need to honor. She was absolutely incredible. So I did, you know, I, I felt the, the weight of that responsibility a lot. Um, I'd say like my process for creating a character, whether it's a real person or whether it's a fictional character probably remains the same. It's just that obviously with a real person, there's way more material out there, especially with someone like me. I mean, there's, you know, she wrote her own book, which was later made into a documentary that won an Oscar. You know, she's obviously talked about in Anne's diary a lot, but there's a plethora of other stuff there about the period and about her. Um, so I did find that a little overwhelming and our, and our showrunners had been working on this for seven years before we made it. So they're literally like walking historians about this time. So I, I tried to just pick and choose a couple of things because at the end of the day, you know, it's for me. And I, I think this comes from my theater experience. Like I really try to do all, you know, all the research and all the prep and, you know, it happens before, like as if I'm in like a rehearsal room like you do with theater. And then as soon as I'm on the stage or, you know, on the set, I try and let all of that go. And it's just about being present in the moment. So in the lead up to starting filming, the first thing I did was go to Amsterdam. I mean, for me, Amsterdam really is a character in this show. It's such an iconic city. It operates in a very specific way, as in it's built on waterways, everyone cycles everywhere. And it's the same now in that way as what it was in the, in the 40s. So I went to Amsterdam and I got on a bike and I um, I cycled Meep's route to work and I visited her old apartment and I cycled the route that she took Margot through the checkpoint that was just shown in that clip. Um, and um, I went to the Anne Frank house. I'd never been to the Anne Frank house. And, you know, it's such, um, it's so valuable. You know, we're making a show about, a time a real true time and the, the the place that it's set is still completely standing you know I could go into the real Anne Frank house and sit at where Meep would have sat at her desk and look out the window she would have looked out of it was unbelievably useful and the Anne Frank house foundation they were so generous to us with private tours and showing us areas of the house that you know people aren't usually allowed to go in and they were incredible. So yeah, I went to Amsterdam. That was the main thing. And then also, as I just said, Meep wrote her own book. It's called Anne Frank Remembered. It was written in the 80s. And it's her, it's the, the beginning of it is just kind of, she talks about where she came from. She had a very interesting life herself. She was um, adopted um, when she was nine. She's actually from Vienna. So she talks a lot about that. And then also her 
firsthand kind of account of the events um you know that happened during the war so that was really useful for me because it is her first you know she wrote it so you really do get a sense of her who she is and um there was one other thing that I found useful which was a, a transcript of an interview that Meep and Yarn did in the 90s when they were much older where they also go through the events it's like a 250 page transcript and from that I got a really good sense of their kind of banter with each other so those are like the main three things. And then once I'd like absorbed all of that, then I just focused on, I mean, I had so much work to do. I mean, it was such a heavy schedule. You know, sometimes we were shooting like 10 pages a day. So I had a lot of line learning to do. And I just, it was, a you know, I was just kind of prepping for the week ahead. Uh, well, we're going to take a look at another clip. Uh, this is one with Meep and her husband, Jan, uh, played by the wonderful Joe Cole. Let's take a look. So you're going to tell me. He's my boss and my friend. I'm your husband. I never wanted the kind of marriage where I had to consult my husband about everything. Ah, no, what, what kind of marriage did you want then? One where you lie to your husband, doesn't matter. I didn't ask you to help because, like I said, I don't need your help. No, no you don't need my help. You don't need my help. And then when you're arrested, Taken to a concentration camp. You're gonna be all right all on your own, aren't you? Can we not have this argument? It's the right thing to do, and I've agreed to do it, and I didn't think I had to consult you before deciding to save a person's life. Who the hell do you think you are? The only person with morals. What would you have me do when Mr. Frank asked? Ask, Say no! Ask me. That's what I'd have you do. Stop being selfish. Think about someone beside yourself. How dare you! No, 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 how, how dare you! You live in this this fantasy that you're that you're all alone and your, your your mother abandoned you and your new family didn't understand you and poor Meep has no one. Are you cling to it? But I'm here. I'm right here. You don't even see me. You don't see me. Stop shouting at me. Skin, I'm so hot. Come here. Your entire cast is so fantastic. I love your scenes with Joe Cole and also Leah Schreiber, who plays Otto Frank. Uh, what was it like having such powerful scene partners? Oh, I mean, a dream. <laughs> it was incredible. Um, Joe and I, it, I mean, I've never had such good chemistry with anyone. I mean, we just, um, I think that offset like we have exactly the same sense of humor like we enjoy the same things like we immediately became very close friends and on set we do really kind of work in very similar ways like we're um very much like let's just get into the meat of scene and feel it out and you know as you just saw in that clip there are many kind of very kind of intense meaty scenes between the two of them and they're some of my favorite scenes in the whole show you know as much as this show is about this kind of like overarching, um, intense historical and political black backdrop is also about incredibly relatable things like marriage, you know, that we really do see Jan and Meep's marriage grow and develop over the course of these eight episodes. And, you know, getting into the kind of nitty gritty of that is kind of as an actor for me, like the most like the best stuff um and he was just yeah he, I mean you saw from that clip he's so he's so brilliant and wonderful and he was just incredible to work with and then um Liev I just think that his performance as Otto is so beautiful and such a good antithesis to my performance as Meep you know he's so um kind of quiet but still warm and arresting and, you know, Meep is so kind of chaotic and outspoken. And I just think that the two performances really complement each other. And I think it was, and it was such an interesting relationship to explore because, 
you know, like what I was saying before, me being such a modern young woman, like there is something really modern about her relationship with Otto, you know, for a woman in the 40s to be such close friends with a man that was like kind of 20 years her senior was kind of unheard of. And so it was just something really special about that. And um, I couldn't have imagined anyone else doing it other than BF. He was just, he's so, he's so good. He's so good. <laughs> And the young actress who plays Anne Frank, um, Billy, I, I haven't seen her before. She's fantastic. She's amazing. And, you know, they searched high and low, obviously, you know, it's incredibly important that they got that right. And I think there's something so natural about Billy's performance and she really humanizes Anne. You know, Anne really has it, it had been kind of immortalized in the diary. Like we think about her almost as a character, not as just the kind of normal young woman that she that she was. And and Billy um, kind of really, really nails that and really brings it home that, you know, she was just, you know, she was in the annex from ages 13 to 15. Those are the most intense times for like a young woman. We all know that, you and I know that. So, and I think, you know, Billy really nails that kind of fine line between like her vulnerability, but also kind of her teenage like angst and, and but yeah, she's so fantastic. We were so lucky, like everyone in this show is, so good it really was um, a dream job in that way uh uh you mentioned that you and joe having the same sense of humor which i think is so important especially when you're dealing with you know such a serious topic um what was the atmosphere on set like were you able to have some levity yeah i mean i think you you have to with a subject matter like this like this show took five months to film we were all on location in prague we we did three weeks in amsterdam um but you know the majority of it were on sound stages in prague and it, you're living in you know it's very heavy you know um very heavy subject and that almost brings everyone together more i think like this was the kind of show where like no one was ever in their trailers like we were always all on set, like sitting in our chairs, like hanging around with each other, talking, making like, you know, in between scenes, like sometimes like joking and laughing together. And I think that it really is the way to get through it. You know, we were a real team and we really looked after each other emotionally on the weekends. You know, we had like nice dinners and we had like fun karaoke nights and I couldn't have imagined it any other way because especially for me, I mean, I'm, I'm in every scene of the show, I, I couldn't have, I could not have taken that home with me every weekend and just lived in it because it would have driven me into the ground, I think. Um, and I don't think I don't think everyone's work would have been as good if we hadn't have managed to find some levity. And also, you know, there's levity in the show. Yeah. Um, you know, I think it's really smart of our showrunners, the kind of tone that they were going for. And they, they, they even though it's it's risky, they chose to show funny moments, you know, and I think but I think it's smart because that's how humans are. Um, I think that that's in our human nature is to try and find the good and is to try and like look towards the positive. And so you see moments of that in the show too, which I, I think is really important to make an audience connect to it on a human level. What ended up being the most challenging scene or moment or just, you know, anything about working on the show? When you're working on a show like this and there are so many emotional scenes, like there are so many scenes where it's like me, then meet cries and you know, I'm sure, I don't know if every actor will admit this, but like sometimes when you're in an emotional scene, like you can fake cry and like you're pretending and it and it looks real and it's great. And then there's sometimes when you, you know, it feels unbelievably truthful and you're actually crying and you actually feel really emotional. And, you know, I had a few of both versions when I was making this show. And one that really stuck out for me was just after they find out that Anne and Margot have died at Bergen Belsen. And um, Meep goes to the train station where Jan is, um, he's working for the government and he's helping to readmit people who have come back from the camps. And she goes to deliver him the news that unfortunately the girls aren't coming back. And there were many reasons why I found that very emotional to shoot. Um, one was that the extras that we were working with, a lot of them had actually shaved their heads and lost weight. And it just, it felt very um, real and palpable, that kind of somber energy. And, you know, it was, it was weird. Um, but also by that time, we were kind of like five months into shooting and I had really gotten to know Billy, uh, who played Anne and Ashley, who played Margot. And it just all felt too real and just thinking about them and you know and they're at the same age that Anne and Margot would have been at and it just I found that very very difficult to film that scene um 
Yeah, I mean, there were just so many moments making this show where you're like, I'm making a show and then suddenly you're like, oh no, this, I'm making a show about really true events and it would hit home and yeah, it, it was difficult in many ways. Well, and also uh, you're, you've done so many different projects and genres, but you mentioned this is your first time leading a series. I mean, what was it like to be number one on the call sheet? That also must put <laughs> no pressure on you. Yeah, I think it comes with responsibility, you know, um, I, yeah, it does. I think it's important for the person who's number one on the call sheet to, you know, bring everyone together and really make everyone a team. And, you know, you know, you've got to lead by example. So um, I felt the pressure of doing that, but I think I, I think I did a good job. I think people, um, you know, had a good time and, and I did as well. And yeah, it was, it was good experience. What's it been like having this out in the world now? Because I know it premiered on May 1st and the response has been so immediate, at least from, from my point of view. And I imagine, you know, people want to have conversations with you about this. It, it must be, you know, overwhelming. Yeah, it is overwhelming. And I, I think that the, the show, the show has been received really well and people are responding. You know, the one thing that I was like, oh, is this going to work? Is the kind of this tonally modern edge that we were going for because it's kind of towing a line whereby it's not Bridgerton where it's like you do you know what you know what I mean like where they speak in really really modern language but also it's not your kind of classic period piece but I'm really pleased that it's, it seems to have been translating and kind of showing our story through this kind of day-to-day -day more modern lens I think is making people connect to it much more immediately than maybe like other historical dramas, in my opinion. I, and I'm really, I'm really pleased about that because that was kind of the main aim. I mean, you mentioned not personally, you know, liking period pieces or find, you know, being being concerned about, you know, finding it restrictive. Um, but how much does it help to show up on a set that has like this amazing art direction, those costumes? As an actor, all of that has to help you. A hundred percent. And we were so blessed, like our production designer Mark Holmes and our costume designer Matthew Simonelli are so talented and I think that it was Susanna our director EP and our showrunner's choice of of uh, basically Matthew our costume designer had never done a period piece before yeah but that but and I think it was so smart of them to hire him they hired him because they loved like he'd like done search I think that show search party where he'd like oh, I love search party. yeah but yeah. and they were like his costumes in that are great like let's hire him and I think there was something so smart about that because often when you like watch period pieces I find that if it's set in 1942 everyone is in this in an outfit from 1942 but that's not how people dress like in your if you're in 1942 you might be like wearing like your grandma's sweater from the 1910s or you might have like borrowed like your brother's belt or like do you know what I mean like people style or always have historically like styled clothes in different ways and that's really how he um approached the work and it was so revelatory to me because even though I was always dressed in you know everything is true to you know there's nothing like mo actually modern in it but I felt like me like I felt like me like I felt like the character like it felt like very like um, like tangible and like like a real outfit <laughs> do you know what I mean and the same goes with the styling of the sets like you know everything is of course true to the period but like it just is yeah just something tangible about it it didn't feel like I'm on a set from the 1940s and he did you know Mark Holmes our production designer it's so crazy so if any for anyone who's been to the Anne Frank house uh, the Opecta offices of our set and the Anne Frank and the annex of our set is a it's a direct replica. Um, I mean, I think it's maybe like a few centimeters bigger just to allow the cameras to move, and there are like walls fly and stuff. But it's it looks exactly the same. So um, yeah, we were incredibly lucky, and they're they're incredibly talented people, and yeah, it made it makes it so much easier when the clothes you're wearing and the sets you're in feel like real. <laughs> Absolutely. And we always like to close by asking, in case someone hasn't had a chance to start watching A Small Light yet, is there one particular thing about this biographical miniseries that stands out for you that would make someone tune in and check it out right now? Yeah, I mean, I think A, it's incredibly 
I mean, just to learn about this like young woman who is like all of us. She was like a young woman in her twenties who was like partying too much and like newly in love and like was a bit directionless and like didn't know what job she was going to get. Like we can all, anyone who's been a young person can relate to that. Um, but who was kind of this ordinary person who ended up doing this extraordinary thing. It's just incredible. And for anyone watching who watches and thinks, oh, surely this part of the story is made up. None of it is like everything that these people did is true. It's all factual. And it's just, I mean, it will, it will blow your socks off. Like the bravery that these people, um, yeah, it's, it's, I think you should watch it. <laughs> <laughs> it's so fantastic. And I want to thank you so much for being here today. I want to remind everyone you can watch a small light on both Hulu and Disney plus again. Thank you so much for joining us for this half hour with. Thank you.